Welcome to Style and LP's channel. Today I'm going to perform a test on my little bear T10 version 2.5 2 phono preamp. In the time I've had this phono preamp, it's worked great. I, I enjoyed it immensely. I played many records on it. I enjoyed it for months without any issues. I have not had the dreaded hum issue that some users have reported having that, that they had to go to great lengths to fix. After listening to it for a few months, I decided a new phono preamp came out on the market. They came out with a new version. Um, this is the Little Bear version 2.6. So I, these are so cheap that I decided just to buy it. And it, it had so many upgrades over the original one that I figured, what the heck, I might as well get it. Now this this new one had a tutorial transformer with shield tubes um, and an external power switch and a, a ground lift switch that the previous model didn't have. So now that I have two of them, I figured I could use my first one as a test bed and see if I couldn't improve it even more just for the fun and, and for learning. So I went ahead and I ordered a bunch of Mundorf capacitors, paper and oil, and all the resistors to replace R1 through R25 with higher quality resistors. And I decided I figured I'm pretty good at soldering. I might as well swap them all out and just see what happens and see if I could hear a difference and, s and see if it's worth actually upgrading some of those things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of advice on the internet what to do about those sort of things and what to expect, but it's a lot different when you do it yourself and, 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 and experience it and see and, and find out for you. The first step is replacing all the capacitors. It wasn't much of a problem, even though the caps were a lot larger than the original ones were, but I got them to fit and I glued them down with hot glue and it powered up and it played audio, it played sound. So it was no problem at that point. It was still breaking in, I was still up in the air whether or not I liked it better or not, if the sound improved or not. Then I decided to go all the way and buy all those resistors. When they came in, I made the newbie mistake of not measuring them. I did not measure them to confirm their values. I just simply just swapped them all out. I, put them, I just soldered them all in without even stopping or testing. And sure enough, after I was done, there was no sound coming out. So now I'm stuck at this point with no audio. But I still am able to play my new version, no problem. I've been enjoying this for a few months while I'm trying to sort out this old one. So wish me luck and here we go. In this video I'm going to perform measurements on the transformer the AC 110 power lines coming into the transformer, the 15 volt, 6.3 volt, and the 200 volt VAC power lines coming into the circuit board from the transformer. I'm going to do a frequency sweep, inject an audio signal through the circuit to pinpoint to find out where it's, I'm losing my signal. So the first thing I want to do is I want to measure my voltages and make sure they have not changed. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. BD I'm sorry, the AC. Yeah. Here we go. Put my little together. Zero, zero out my multimeter. Okay, give this some AC. Power. Okay, this is my 110 volt and red wires. They measure 121.4 VAC. My uh, 200 volt blue black wires measure 203 VAC and 203 VAC, both, both sides. Now my yellow wire 6.3 volt AC volt is 6.87 VAC. And my 15 volt green wires measure 16.94. So my AC has not changed. Okay, I'm, so I went ahead and I powered it back up. It's all ready to be tested again. I honestly do not know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a shot based on everybody's feedback on allcircuits.com website. So I have this mini cable. First off, I have I, I downloaded uh, a, a test tone application 
for my cell phone. Um, I can play back any frequency I want. I'll probably try 400 hertz. And I'll play it back out of the mini port of my cell phone. And I'll connect it with this mini plug. And the other end of the mini, other side of the mini plug, the other end of the cable, I'll go ahead and connect to, uh, what's clip? Rose, rose clips. Um, the negative will be on that last barrel, and the positive will be my test probe, my injection probe, my audio injection probe. And I added a 100k resistor and a 0.01 uh, UF capacitor. I think it's UF. It's one point. It's one. It's 0 0.01 UF. Let's see. It actually says it right on there. Yeah, it's rated at uh, 400 watts at 0.1 UF. So it should work, and I'll just go ahead and touch that end in into the injection points. So I'll be injecting a test tone signal into the amp at different s stages. I'm going to follow the, um, the schematic. And then on this side, on the, out phono, on the outputs, RCA jack outputs, um, I connected it to my radio over here. And I got the power on right now. I got the volume tur volume turned up, so it's ready to take an auxiliary input. I went ahead and connected it into a mini. There's a mini port in the back, so that's a mini Y function. So that's ready to go. Um, on the negative on the negative coming from my mini is connected to right here, uh, right underneath the AC jack into the uh, negative strip there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play back my my signal and see if I get, can get any noise coming out of it. So I'm going to try, I'm going to start on the schematic. I'm going to start with uh, left channel. Uh, R17 is the in. Yeah. So that's the farthest away in this in this in the, that's the farthest away in the circuit because the out the r r25 is the output left channel which is this white rca cable that's going to go to the amp so i guess i could i should start backwards i should start here inject a signal actually i should inject a signal straight into the jack itself into the RCA plug itself. I'll disconnect it and, and inject it right over straight into it and see if that comes, see if any noise comes out. Then I'll then I'll take the signal at test at R25 and then uh, pin eight at V3B. Um, C12 is there on the way. It's probably a decoupling cap. I've read about that on the internet. A lot of this stuff don't make sense to me. So it goes to the tube V3B into pin seven, and it sends pin seven over to, it receives the signal from R6 and C7, C7 is probably a decoupling cap. It eliminates the AC from the DC or something like that. So power doesn't go, only the signal gets carried through, only AC, which carries the signal, goes through to the tube. That's what I think that's what I read. So it comes from, that signal comes from uh, V2A tube, was off of pin one. So I'll take a measurement there. Then I'll take a measurement going into that tube at pin two. Then I'll take another measurement coming from R20, uh, C10, another decoupling decoupling cap, from pin six off of tube V1B. Then I'll try pin seven, and then input RCA jack. So we'll go from there. Um, I also bought one of these. I have no, I, I couldn't, a lot of stuff doesn't make any sense to me. I have no idea what some of the stuff on the back says, what it means. Um, I figure I'd give it a shot. I'll, the only thing I recognize on here is uh, 20 megahertz frequency response. So maybe I can use this probe to trace the signal. So I really don't know what TTL, CMOS is, or pulse, or any of that stuff. And, how to decipher this. I couldn't find any YouTube videos on how to use this either. All the YouTube videos talked about um, uh, uh, transistor circuits and uh, socket socket chips. I also have um, a Craftsman. I got a couple of different multimeters. And this Craftsman I just bought, 
that measure compact compact uh, capacitance. Actually, I got lucky. Uh, I just I didn't even realize it, but this also measures frequency, which my more expensive one doesn't do. My X text doesn't do that. And I looked it up on the in their manual here. My X text and my Craftsman manual, and it tells you how to do it. It measures um, the frequency range it measures in is pretty high. The whole frequency. Frequency right there. Yeah, it measures 5 hertz, 50, 500, 5K, 50K. It measures all, all those. So, after I do this test that I just mentioned about injecting a, a test tone into the circuit, I see if I can hear any noise coming out of the speakers. I'm going to try this next. It'll be the second test. And this one, I'll inject a. Um, the f test tone through the RC jacks, the input. And then I'll use the multimeter at all those different points along the circuit to see if the multimeter picks up those frequencies. So I'll try it both ways. No idea what to use that one for. I could try reverse engineer the theory behind it all and um, do that as a third test and correlate all my findings between the three things and maybe I'll figure out if, that's, if I should even send that back and get my $20 back. Get a refund, but here we go. I'm gonna have to turn this phone off for um, for for generating the signal if it's, a, it's just the camera I'm filming with. So I'll be right back. Also, we're gonna perform another test. I have the music playing streaming from my cell phone app through the mini cable to the RCA jack inputs on the, on the phono preamp board, the circuit board. Um, and I have the RCA jacks plugged in on the RCA jack output board into my uh, radio, my amplifier, amplifier radio over there. And there's a mini jack auxiliary input in the back of that. So you can hear the music in the background playing right now. And I wanted to test the different channels and see if it's, if it's just one channel that's having a problem or both. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug uh, the, the source input red right channel. Be careful here. It's still playing audio, so I'm gonna put the right in again. It got louder when I plugged it back in. Now I'm gonna take the left channel out. Get a little bit quieter, but it's still playing. Now I'm gonna put both RC jacks back in, so the source inputs are both connected to my cell phone. Now the outputs. I'm gonna remove the left channel white cable. It got a little bit quieter, but it's still playing. Plug it back in, it's louder again. Unplug the red cable, right side. Still playing, just got a little quieter. So um, there's a signal, audio signal, going through the entire circuit from the inputs all the way to the outputs on both channels. That's why I wanted to confirm. Also one of the tests on the circuit board was there's a switch on the circuit board called high and low. Right now it's set at high, and what it's for is it, it increases the, I think something about the impedance or the output of the phono stage to accommodate uh, low or high output cartridges. My cartridge is the Grado Black, which is a 7.0 millivolt output, very, very high output cartridge, um, moving magnet cartridge. So I, I, I can set mine to low. I just changed it to low, and I still hear music coming from both channels. So I try both high and low. But I usually keep it on low when I'm listening to it. I'm playing an audio track from my Samsung S7 cell phone from the mini cable to the RCA jack inputs of the circuit board, both channels, left and right. And um, previously, um, I was asked on the circuit forums to perform a certain test. This. Uh, I was told to perform these certain locations on the circuit board and do a voltage check. And I believe that's DC, DC check. So I have my uh, black probe, negative probe, uh, in the gr inserted into the ground, the ground lug between the RCA jacks. So the first one, the first measurement, I'm going to start from the very beginning. So the first measurement 
is you met uh, it was measured previously on the forums as 271 volts and that would be resistor R27 um, right after um, R27 26 Huh, okay, R27 is between C3 and C4. So this is C3, that's C4. So I'm going to go ahead and measure right after C3 into R27. I got 244 volts. That was quick and accurate. Um, you reported 271. At the other side of the resistor, which is the second second point, you measure 266 volt, volts, I get 219 volts DC, 218 volts, 219. Okay, so the next point on the chart was um, R28 at the beginning. Um, that's between C4 and C5. Okay. 219 volts. Okay. Now the other side of the resistor, the, the other side of R28 is two, 160 volts. And you had 266 volts. Okay. So the next point on the chart is um, way up here, which is. Um, R21. Let it go. See the chart here. Yeah, R21. Both sides of R21. So you had measured um, 250 volts. My R21 measures 160 volts. The other side measures. 160 volts. It's dropping down to 159 volts. 159. Okay, I performed that measurement.